Oh my goodness. I mean, it's honestly incredible what you see happening right now. I, I who would have thought? I mean, you've got the likes of Chuck Schumer, Hillary Clinton, you name it, out there on the left, effectively accusing Donald Trump of stealing the courts, right? Just like he stole the election. This is total insanity. Is is within his right. It is within the president's right and the Senate's right to actually put a justice on the court. And it's the right thing to do, right? It is their duty to do that. We elected them for a reason. Americans knew that this might happen. And I get it. So be it. He gets three. They don't like that. He's going to get three justices when it's all said and done. So they're going to turn around and try and pack the courts. That's what they're talking about. So good to have you all here. Welcome. Welcome to the program. It's good to be back with you. I am Trish Regan. Go to Trish Intel, trishintel.com. Download the podcast. I'm there every day. I'm here on YouTube. I'm here on Facebook. I'm here on Twitter, Parler, all of social media, because this is an important time and we need to continue connecting. There's a lot going on right now. And what the left is trying to do, I mean, <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. What do you think they would do if they were in the same position? Look at what they did to Justice Kavanaugh. I mean, think about the accusations that were leveled at him with no actual proof of anything. It was horrible. I mean, it's horrible to put anybody through that. I'm curious to see what they do to a woman, right? There's several women in contention right now. It looks like Amy Barrett is in the lead, mother of seven, by the way. Good luck going after her. I, I really don't think it's going to be very becoming of them. Not that it was becoming what they did to Justice Kavanaugh, but they certainly can't go after a woman in the same kind of way. It would be extremely distasteful, but they're unhappy and they are mad and they are threatening right now to effectively pack the courts, which would undo the very separation of powers on which this country was built. So think about that for a second and think what we are up against. It's so good to have you all here. Frank, welcome. Thank you so much. Cher out in Florida, thank you for being here. Rich, I'm glad I'm back too. You know what? It's just such an important time and no one's going to keep me quiet. Not that they ever could, but they definitely can't now. And I look at what's happening right now in our courts and I think, my goodness, I mean, my goodness, are you going to actually try and destroy what we have, what our founding fathers created in the way of the separation of powers? The Supreme Court is supposed to lag behind everything else, right? That's, that's how it works. The Supreme Court is supposed to take its time. It's supposed to lag everything else, but no, no, no. They want to come through and they want to get the House and they want to get the Senate and they want to get the Oval Office and they then want to try and pack the courts. In fact, Joe Biden was, interestingly enough, asked about this very thing today in Wisconsin by a reporter there. And what did he say? Oh, I'm not going to answer that. I'm not going to answer that question. Come on. You know what? We deserve to know the answer to that question. Do we not? As Americans that are about to cast a vote, we deserve to know the answer. He said just about a year ago um, in debates that it, it would be awful, that we would regret the day considerably if we were to ever do that to the courts. And now when he's asked, suddenly he can't answer the question, please come on. So good to have you all here. Eric, welcome. Kaiwan, it's uh, good to have you here. Jeff out there in Iowa. I love Iowa. Agnes, so great to see you. Thanks for tuning in. How funny. It's great to have all my friends here today. Welcome to every single one of you. Rich, good to have you watching. Good to have you back. And East Tennessee, Mimi, good to have you too. Listen, this is, this is important stuff because the very fabric of our country was based upon the idea that you have a separation of powers, right? That is critical to who we are and what we have been for the last 200 plus years and hopefully what we will be for the next 200 plus years. And they want to take that away? Hillary Clinton getting in on the act? I mean, has someone told her that she's not actually running this time around? It must kill her, huh? <laughs> She's back out there telling NBC what she thinks today. And I look at it right now and I think if we don't actually have another justice on the court, we run massive, serious risks come November, right? Because they've already indicated, Hillary Clinton herself has said Joe Biden should not concede no matter what and he should lawyer up. And indeed, Joe Biden has lawyered up. He's got 600 plus lawyers working for him now because he's ready to contest this no matter what. I'm telling you, Florida is gonna look like a walk in the park. Remember those hanging chads? <laughs> that is gonna seem like a you know field day compared to what we could potentially see if anything is close 
on November 3rd. And so that's all the more reason why you actually need some kind of consensus there on the bench. You don't want four versus four. You actually need somebody who can tip the scales and actually make a decision. And the idea that the senator from Maine or that the senator from Alaska, interestingly, both women, who would have an opportunity to appoint another woman to the Supreme Court, both of them are trying to back away from this. They don't want to have to make a decision because their constituents don't want them to because somehow it's, um, you know, not appropriate to to put a justice on the court. It is appropriate. After all, this is what these guys are supposed to do. I realize they don't actually want to make any decisions and show any leadership skills, but this is what they are hired. Yes, hired to do. When they are voted into office, they are expected to do things like this so that we don't wind up in some kind of constitutional crisis come November 3rd, December 3rd, January 3rd, as we knock on January 20th and we're expecting a president to be sworn into office, right? Donna Lee, good to have you here from Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, Soros's name keeps coming up. Aaron, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I understand it. Again, I, I have no problem talking about Soros. He's a big contributor to the Democratic Party. Some people don't want to say that. I have no problem saying it. A lot of people are big Democratic party donors, and, and we talk about them all the time. Um, Cher, I agree with you. It is an obligation. And <laughs> you lived through the hanging chad. So did I. I mean, I was just sort of starting out my career at the time. And I remember that night and how insane it was and how insane the following days were, right? We don't want to go through that again. We really don't. But we are very much in jeopardy of that, no matter what happens, frankly. Because you look at what they're saying, for example, in Michigan, already they're, they're gearing up for a battle. I guarantee you we're going to see a lot of battles in a lot of states all across the country. OK, just just be ready for that. And you're already seeing in the streets of New York, right, protest after Ruth Bader Ginsburg died because they're already anticipating this fight. It's like everybody's just primed for battle. And my only point is you want a Supreme Court that can function. You want a Supreme Court that can come to a consensus and that can make a decision. And so it's really good that Romney, by the way, he was like the hero of the left, remember, when they were doing what he wanted? Well, now Romney's coming out saying he would support, as he should, the president's decision for the Supreme Court. And now the left, watch how quickly they change their tune on Mitt Romney right now. Barbecue, good to have you here. Lyndall, thank you so much for being here. Mark, hey, out there in North Carolina, it's good to have you watching. Thank you so much. It's all good. To, it's good to see all of you. Igor as well. Preston, thank you very much. I am curious what you guys think. I mean, I, I think we have to be sort of prepared for whatever comes our way. And to me, you want a strong Supreme Court in the position to deal with that. And you've got a chance to get a woman on, which I think is kind of neat, right? And, and you've got a, a couple contenders there. I would say the two top, per my intel, the two top contenders are Amy Coney Barrett and of course, Barbara Lagoa out of Florida. Now, Barbara would be interesting because she's Cuban American. She would not be the first Hispanic on the court that goes to Sotomayor, but nonetheless, she has an interesting perspective in that with her Cuban heritage, she knows, believe me, she knows what socialism and communism can do to a nation, right? So that would be uh, rather, rather refreshing to have that viewpoint on there. I think it would also, in some ways, perhaps help him in the state of Florida, where amazingly, you know, the guy who, who came out so aggressively against Hispanic immigrants is now possibly going to have Hispanics on his side as he goes and seeks four more years in the Oval Office. And the reason for that, I think fundamentally, is because Americans, we care most, I don't care what color skin you are, you know, whether you're orange or green or purple or pink or whatever, right? I think that we care most about opportunity, economic opportunity. And that's what the Democrats com have completely misjudged when it comes to Latinos in America and Latinos in Florida. And so consequently, you look at these new, new polls coming out and we're seeing increasingly that Joe Biden's doing kind of bad, like miserably bad among Latinos, especially compared to how, say, Hillary Clinton was doing back in 2016. And the reason for that is, is that Latinos, no different than anybody else, 
I mean, we all want the same things in life, right? And this is why I think elections are voted very much by people's pocketbooks. TC, you agree with me? Absolutely. Yes, Cher, you're right down there in Florida, and you say she's been great. Barbara Legault has been great for Florida. She was the first Hispanic on the Supreme Court in Florida. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I think that uh, she's definitely got a lot of support. One of you is, is mentioning, of course, out of Latinos in Miami, they don't want socialism. No. I mean, I'm amazed by this. I got to tell you, so so of course I have a lot of sources throughout Latin America and especially in Venezuela as a result of some of the reporting I've done. And what I consistently hear, especially from young people, is that they hate socialism. They look at America and they see capitalism and they see this land of opportunity and they know. And then you compare and contrast that with say young people here in the States. And young people here think, oh, you know, so socialism is, is really sexy and, and it's great. And, you know, that's the way of the future. Let me tell you, from the people that have actually experienced it, they know how bad it is. They know how much it infringes on one's rights. And when you think about what's happening overall in terms of cancel culture, hello, I know that one, cancel culture. When you think of what's happening in terms of, you know, people's inability to say what they think and really speak their mind, that is a direct threat really on on our very essence as Americans. We have always welcomed a diversity of opinion and diversity of thought. And you think about even our election process, right? Where I, I, I've said before, you guys may have heard me tell the story, but I grew up in New Hampshire, live free or die country, where you are entitled to your belief and people aren't gonna hold it against you. You know, political discussion is, is treated with um, respect and, and people respect an intellectual and emotional point of view on these things. And they're still your friend, no matter, you know, your viewpoint. But those days feel like they have come and gone. You used to be able to put a sign outside your house for whatever candidate that you were you were voting for. You can't do that anymore. You can't do that or you risk your house being vandalized. I mean, what has happened to us as a country where we cannot be civil with one another, where one side feels that it is entitled, entitled to shut down the other side. And that's what increasingly we are seeing. So good to have you all here. Todd, welcome. TC, good to have you here. Nick, yes, socialism already in the United States. I get it. We are starting to see socialism in the United States. The point is it just can't continue, right? It can't continue because if it does, I'll tell you, we're going to wake up one day and China is going to be the new United States of America. And we will be lucky I used to say we'd be France. We would be lucky to be France because we're going to wake up one day and we run the risk of being Venezuela. And guess what? All those countries on the international front that want to do us harm, they're going to be pretty psyched because ultimately this is sort of what they want, right? They want the ability to take us down. They want the ability for us to no longer be the number one economy in the world. China is waiting in the wings. They are set and ready to replace our US dollar as the currency of choice in the world. And we need to do what we can while we still can, right? While you still got it, so to speak. We are still the most powerful nation and the most powerful economy. And we need to think long and hard about how we use that power and how we make sure that we protect ourselves and our families for the future. Jeffrey, good to have you here. You said that YouTube has blocked the ability to notify you when I'm doing a live stream. You know, I, I'm sorry about that. I have seen increasingly, I've never fully understood it because I, I didn't quite feel the brunt of the shadow blocking until most recently. And I get it now. I get what people have been complaining about. I get what they're upset about. I get that you're not getting the notifications that I'm here. I'm sorry about that. I, I, I recommend, the only thing I can tell you to do is go to trishintel.com because I'm doing what I can there to correspond directly with you and to make sure that we get the word out. And that's one place where if I know I'm going live in the evening, I'll make sure you get an email to hear about it so that you are alerted because there is definitely big tech, if you would, that's trying to sort of, I think really, you know, shut down the voices that are of dissent and voices that are different from what the technology mainstream really wants to represent. And it's not right and it's not fair. Um, but again, this is all the more reason for you guys to go to trishintel.com. And you know what's great about that? What's great is that we're here 
together. There's no institutional noise. It's just me and you. And it, it, there's a purity, I think, to that relationship. Not that there, there never wasn't that, only in that I am me. And all you were ever going to get from me is me. And, uh, you know, there, there's proof of that. There's evidence in the history books now of that, because I feel very strongly about my convictions and my values. And I feel strongly about truth. And I'm always going to tell you what I think. That's just the reality of it. And sometimes it may not be what you want to hear. It may not be what the institutions want to hear, but I'm still going to say it. And you know what? That's my right as an American. This is part of our First Amendment and we need to stand up for our First Amendment. They cannot take that away from us. So I appreciate you all being here. Richard, good to have you here. Larry, you're getting a notification via Facebook. I'm glad to hear that. Facebook actually is doing increasingly, I think, a little bit of a better job. I've got more news to come on that front and I'll tell you all about it. But yes, there is a, a movement underway, one, one could say, among some of the big tech players that want to shut down the other side, but we're not going to let it happen, are we? No. We're not going to let it happen. Robert, good to have you here. James, good to have you here as well. I just want to thank you all for tuning in. And remember, you know, there's a lot going on right now. We need another conservative interpreter of our Constitution there on the court. And I'm sorry, I know the Democrats don't like it, but this is why this election in 2016 was so important. And by the way, it's partly why 2020 is so important right now, too, because if he's successful, and I do believe he will, in getting his nominee through, we need to make sure that that nominee stays there and that they don't turn around and try and pack the courts. Again, Joe Biden not even answering the question today. And within hours of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death, what do we see but an opinion piece in the Washington Post saying that they should pack the courts? We cannot allow that to happen. It would destroy who we are as Americans. Wonderful to have you all here. I will see you on the podcast. To do do uh, d download it. You can get it on trishintel.com, and I'm there every single day. And you can hear my thoughts direct me to you. You can correspond there on the website with me. And we're going to keep this thing going. Thank you again for tuning in, and have a wonderful, wonderful night, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. If I can figure out how to turn this off. <laughs>